Kia ora tātou, nai mai, haere mai, and welcome everyone. My name is Dora Bera, and I'm the Partnerships and Relationships Manager here at the Trans Tasman Business Circle. In the past 18 months, the circle has been committed to business, ensuring business continuity and connectivity between people. We have endeavoured to provide a platform for government and corporate leaders to share their perspectives, not only on the, the pandemic, but on the new evolving normal, as unpredictable as it will be. I'd like to welcome you all to our second instalment of the Vox Pop, Vox Pop series, Our Way Forward, The Voice of Business, featuring Rob Fife. Rob is a New Zealand businessman and former Chief Executive Officer at Air New Zealand. Prior to this, he held a number of executive roles, both internationally and here in New Zealand. Rob now holds governance roles and recently has been appointed Chairman of Michael Hill. Last year, he was appointed as the liaison between government and private sector for the, for the extent of the COVID-19 crisis. A reminder, we are on the record today and um, we'll be sharing the recording of today's briefing to our YouTube channel following the event. I'll now pass over to Rob for opening remarks. Thanks, uh, Dora and uh, kia ora. It's, um, it's a pleasure to be here talking to you all today. Um, well, you know, when I look back at the last uh, uh, 20 months, it's been an interesting journey uh, for me. Uh, to be honest, I've spent most of my career avoiding uh, having too much to do with government. Now I find myself uh, knee deep in, in uh, interaction with government. So it's been a, a steep learning curve. I think by way of opening remarks, you know, we're in a very interesting phase. And I look at COVID, I think of this as a third phase of this pandemic. The first phase uh, in both uh, New Zealand and Australia was the the, the, the managing the immediate crisis as, as COVID uh, entered our shores and through March, April, May, June last year, we were building the systems at pace to respond uh, to this emerging crisis. From July last year through to, uh, to really July this year, the second phase, it was actually, although we were dealing with a lot of dynamic challenges, it was a relatively stable scenario. We, uh, we were dealing with primarily one variant of the, uh, of the virus, which was the alpha uh, variant. We were focused on elimination. We had uh, the infrastructure in place to, uh, uh, to maintain elimination in the context of an, of an alpha variant. And, and we executed that uh, quite effectively in, in both Australia and New Zealand. And the system stabilized around that model. Well. Delta arrived, phase three of, the, um, of this pandemic, Delta arrived, um, it was earlier than July, but became, started becoming an issue in, in June, July. In the last three months, we've been having to almost turn the system on its head to deal with the different dynamics of this uh, Delta variant. And I guess to a large extent, it shows that we, we probably didn't use the time as wisely as we should have in, in that second phase, you know, July last year to July this year, uh, to build our, our systems, our resilience and preparation for this uh, new variant. I guess easy to say in hindsight, it's the reality of where, where we are. What we now need to do is adapt our system at pace to deal with a very different virus uh, than what we were dealing with for the uh, for the first 18 months. And, you know, I think uh, that's we're all being challenged by the, the by the reality that's emerging of us as uh, is, is that's that's going to be very difficult, um, and and we need to work together as government, business, as as communities in both Australia and New Zealand if we're going to get a pathway out of this at the speed we all need. So on that note, I'll uh, I'll pass over to uh, to, to Sharon to. Uh, to to prompt me with a few challenging questions. Brilliant, thank you, Rob. Um, certainly useful and interesting to compare 2020 to 2021 and the place that we found ourselves in now in New Zealand. And I think I reflect that we probably were still a bit complacent at the end of last year and into early 2021. And I like um, you saying we need to adapt our system at, place and, at pace, sorry, and I think we can talk about that a bit further. Um, obviously, the purpose of the series is to hear the voice of the New Zealand business community and to amplify the innovative strategies that they're coming up with, how they're preparing for a vaccinated future, opening borders and the new normal. Um, you've been front and centre for some time, making very sensible recommendations on our pathway forward, which we thank you for. 
Um, we liked the particular comments you were making around consequences for those making not making a personal choice to get vaccinated, advocating for the use of um, vaccine passports and initiatives such as home, the home isolation pilot. So we're really interested to understand what the response has been from the business community to your ideas. Yeah, you, right from the outset, so you know, I've been going at this 20 months, um, the level of engagement from the business community has been phenomenal. And in fact, you know, if, I, if I've got a frustration of the last 20 months, it's been the inability, uh, particularly for government to figure out how to harness that. And, you know, I feel some personal responsibility for that. You know, I've been playing this liaison role and I think I've done a pretty average job, to be frank, of, of figuring out how to leverage all that good goodwill. And I think that's largely because, as I say, we're in a relatively stable dynamic for, for at least the last year or so. Now we need to move fast. We need to be agile we need to do a lot more test and trial because a lot of these things, it's not clear what the path forward from, from here is. Business is really good at test, trial and learn. To be quite frank, government isn't really designed to do test, trial and learn. That's not how you bring law and regulation in, in, into being. It doesn't work like that. So I think now is the moment where we see, need to see much more engagement and leveraging all those good ideas and, and the willingness of business, as I say, to, to try things and not be afraid uh, to fail. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm interested to hear if you can share some of those ideas, but then also how can we build a better, um, a comprehensive or a more transparent conversation? What could the business community be doing to to amplify and talk about those innovations that they have with government? So I've seen three like really good examples just in, in the last few months. So uh, we, we got up and running a, a, a rapid uh, design sprint exercise working uh, led by CEO of Customs and CEO of Auckland Airport to uh, see if we could design a simplified MIQ process, a shortened MIQ process more suited to this Delta variant. Basically that process is, has been running for two months and we've now got a recommendation of a, uh, of a, of a strategy or a pilot we, we could adopt in that space. Uh, similarly, you know, we've seen in Taylor advocating for a, effectively a, a, a home isolation uh, a path and that's now being integrated into a piece of work the government's been doing around home isolation we had a, a group of 25 businesses here in New Zealand advocating for bringing in uh, rapid antigen uh, tests to utilise in the workplace. Uh, that, that kicked off last Thursday. Um, we're confident we'll you know, get an order for those tests, I would hope, placed by the end of the week. I mean, you know, that, so these things are moving um, at real pace. And, and so that's exciting. So these co-design efforts we leverage the momentum and the resources that business can be uh, and buddy people up with uh, with those inside ministries and government that can help navigate through the government system is getting us some really good results. We just need to do a hell of a lot more of it. <laughs> that's positive news, though, and we haven't heard some of those stories, so that's great. Do you think that the government should be creating the incentives for business to invest more in technology and software to help at this time? Uh, yeah, look, I'm a big believer in distributed idea development. You know, the more we centralise and try and manage ideas from Wellington, and it's true of any organisation, the less you're able to leverage the ideas, the innovation, the momentum, the grassroots energy that's there to solve problems. And ultimately, the impact of COVID is felt at the grassroots, that's often where the motivation is to, to try and find the solution. So we do need to do that. What we need to get cleverer at, I mean, the way these things inevitably seem to come to pass is you get a lot of noise made by someone in the media and finally their idea gets picked up. Um, I'd like to see, I mean, the thing that we're missing here in New Zealand is an agency, you know, a, a COVID recovery agency that can better um, create the bridge between government and, and business and combine the resources to get the right outcomes. At the moment, that agency doesn't exist. Many other countries have set up an, an agency along those lines and have got great value from it. 
So um, just going back to the MIQ situation, and we, we were talking about it earlier, the reality of the current economic situation for business um, remaining relevant on a global stage. Are you worried, given what we've talked about prior as well, that New Zealand will get left behind? Yeah, yeah. You, you know, we clearly we did well in phase, what I described earlier as phase one and two. In phase three, we're, we're drifting off the pace, and that's impacting our competitiveness as a nation. Um, we're a trading nation. Australia's a trading nation. We need to get our people offshore into markets, meeting with clients, meeting with suppliers. And if, if our competitors are doing that and we can't, that, that, that's going to cost us billions of dollars as a country. You add that to the billions of dollars that all these supply chain challenges are causing companies. I mean, we just don't need and we can't afford to have that threat. So the border becomes super relevant to that. And as I mentioned, you know, we built an MIQ system to deal with a, an alpha variant of, of COVID and an elimination strategy. We're moving into an, a new phase where, you know, we're trying to minimise COVID, but we have to accept COVID's probably going to be in our, our communities. We're dealing with a different variant of the virus that present symptoms a lot earlier. I believe there's opportunities to shorten our MIQ stay, there's opportunities to be using home isolation, but that ha has to happen at pace. You know, I hear a lot of talk about first quarter 2022. We need those things in place before Christmas. You know, we, our target should be, you know, November, December for, for those initiatives, not, not next year. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, it's great that Sir Ian's initiatives got off the ground. Um, I recall last year when you co-authored the paper with um, Helen Clark and Sir Peter Gluckman, you were talking about a case for corridors to enable business to be done. Um, I guess prioritizing trading partners and creating something around that. Is that still something that you're thinking might be useful? What could um, that look like? Yeah, I, th I think the world's changed a little, to be honest, since since that paper was written. Um, and, and one of the things with COVID is you have to be prepared to let go of what you leave, believe to be true three months ago, six months ago, 12 months ago, because the world keeps moving on. I mean, I mean, I think the reality now is, you know, the risk profile of, mo of, of the vast majority of the world countries is the same. You know, they're all 70 or 80 or 90% vaccinated. We got, you know, they've got similar profiles. So we need to move away from looking at countries and we need to look at the individual traveler and the risk profile of that traveler. And we need to treat the entry of that traveler relative to their risk profile. If they're double vaccinated, if they've been tested before they departed, they get tested when they arrived and they've come from a country that is pursuing a strategy that, that we feel is appropriate in terms of, as I say, their vaccination rates, their testing rates and, and, and so on, um, then we should have a, a straightforward path for those people to come into the country. So I think bubbles and corridors uh, will be no longer relevant as we uh, as we look into 2022, to be honest. Yeah. And no surprise to you, the number one thing we hear about from our members in the business community is obviously talent supply, um, tech, skills shortage, pipeline. Um, so I was wanted to ask how you suggest that we pivot when we're experiencing these business of critical issues and, and borders closed to remain to retain our competitiveness as leaders in this environment. Yeah, you know, the first thing I'd say is that that talent and skilled labour shortage, that's a global problem now. You know, demand has gone through the roof. We've so much, we've so prime pumped our economies with all the stimulus money we've put in for a fear of a massive unemployment bubble and, you know, GDP hits, which largely haven't eventuated. Um, and all, all that cash sloshing around in the system is creating this big demand surge. And that's feeding through to obviously supply constraints, that's feeding through to demand on, on labor. I, I still believe, you know, I'm inherently an optimist, and I still believe New Zealand in this in this COVID world is still a very attractive place uh, to operate from. It's a very attractive place uh, to live. So our challenge is to make sure we can open our borders fast enough so that we can get this inbound supply of skilled labor and talent and expertise coming into the country faster than it can leave. It's a slightly different situation in Australia where the outbound border has been shut as well. 
But as these markets start to get back underway offshore, the risk is that we have a, a loss of talent as people go back into those markets and we can't, we can't balance the, the ledger uh, inbounds. So that's a, a critical dynamic. The other thing, a thing I think is really significant here, these logistics and supply chain issues, and particularly with sea freight, um, you know, the view is those are now with us for two to three years. We're going to have really constrained access to, uh, to, to vessel capacity coming in and out of New Zealand. It's going to be very, very expensive. You know, we, largely we export and import physical uh, goods. I think it is going to drive us to place a higher value on uh, service uh, exports. And, and I think that will influence the growth of some industries over the next two to three years. See some new industries. Now we always like to hear about the person as well before we finish. So in the new normal, if we can think about that whenever that might be, what are you most looking forward to personally and for New Zealand? Yeah, I you know, my I, what I love, I mean, as a New Zealander is, you know, I, I think we have a really unique perspective on the world. You know, we come from a small country, we don't have a lot of scale, so we tend to be kind of jack of all trades. We can turn our hand to to anything. I think we're a very innovative and, and creative uh, uh, country. Um, I'm just super looking forward to being uh, connected uh, with the world again. I mean, this hiatus of two years, I feel like this, I've got like a coiled spring just wanting to kind of leap forward onto the, um, onto the world stage again. You know, I'm heading offshore actually for some meetings uh, at the end of next week and my first trip, well, I've been to Australia a couple of times, but my first trip and, you know, long haul international for a long time. And I've, I mean, I love, I love flying and I love traveling and I've missed the world, but to be honest, I'm a little apprehensive as to what I'm going to find uh, when I, when I get out there, it's not the world that I remember, I suspect in many ways. So, so it's slightly a, a little bit bittersweet. I'm desperate to, to re-engage, um, but, but as I say, slightly apprehensive as to what, what I'm going to find. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about the people we understand. Um, thank you, Rob. It's been an absolute pleasure to spend 20 minutes with you. It has flown past, but um, really just want to thank you for your ambition for New Zealand. I love the optimism um, mm -hmm. and we love having you out there flying our flag. And I will hand over to Tanya Oziel to formally thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sharon. And Rob, you know, the voice of business is so important and the voice of New Zealand business more than ever. It's, um, it's a narrative that needs to get louder. So we so appreciate you being with us. Um, you know, we started this series in New Zealand with John Key. So, uh, so honoured that you, you've, you came after John and that, um, you know, the insights are so important for so many of the businesses out there who need some reassurance and some sort of different type of vision. And I think the business community can lead the way. And you've certainly shown that us today. And um, good luck on your flying out of New Zealand. And hopefully you will be able to get back into New Zealand. <laughs> and we're I, I'm still waiting for you, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Hopefully by the time you get back, there'll be a different system in place. But really, you know, New Zealand's always led the way. So we, we really do look forward to the day when not New Zealand not only catches up, but actually starts leading again. So um, all kudos to you for doing what you're doing. Thank you for being such an important voice. Thank you for being on the circle journey. And I will hand over to you for the last word. Great, thanks, uh, thanks, Tanya. And you know, I, I am I am optimistic. You know, and I think we we all should look forward from this point. I think we're at the kind of the worst possible part of the uh, of of the cycle. Uh, and I think there's there's some um, some sunshine uh, ahead. We just need to get through the next couple of months. And the critical tool is get vaccinated, right? You know, the vaccination is everything. It's not a it's not a silver bullet. But there's other things we need to do, but it all starts from a foundation of of vaccination. So anything that the people on this call can do to incentivize and motivate and encourage. Uh, th their employees, their staff members, their friends and colleagues to get vaccinated. That's what gets us our freedom back. Brilliant. Well, stay safe, get we'll vaccinated, see. and we'll see you when you get back to New Zealand Fantastic. in person. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> All the best.